Well, the relationship has become incredibly strong. I think the beginnings of it was really APEC, the establishment of the Asia-Pacific Economic Community, the role played by Edgardo Berninger and the Aylwin administration in bringing Chile into that. I think that opened doors of perception in Australia and the region about Chile's existence and role and capacity and it opened doors of perception in Chile as well, running the other way. So the, the, the bilateral relationship on economic and investment and other issues of that kind is very strong. Educationally it's very strong. There are many Chilean students in Australia. Of course there are many Chileans in Australia as a result of the exodus during the, the harrowing post Allende years. So I think there's quite a strong understanding which is unusual for countries in that region with Latin American countries. Chile is an exception. I think also there is huge potential for cooperation in the kind of middle power diplomacy that I was talking about in my lecture. Chile and Australia are already working together on nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament, specific small groups of trying to advocate changes in policy around the world. We are working together in a particular group on the subject of the responsibility to protect against mass atrocity crimes. We are of course working together on trade and economic issues on a multilateral uh, basis. I think there's a real potential connection of values, connection of minds, connection of interests because both countries understand that there are larger issues of problem solving out there on the environment and dozens of other issues of that kind that do require international cooperation. And cooperation outside the normal familiar areas of comfort for Chile outside Latin America, for Australia outside its relations with the United States and the immediate region. So I think the potential for this relationship is very big. Well, I think we need to remember that China's behaviour now is not in the slightest bit different to the behaviour of the great European powers in the scramble for resources in Africa and elsewhere in the 19th century. Not very different from the behaviour over many decades of the United States in areas where it could exercise a combination of economic and political influence. The important thing, however, is that the world has moved on considerably over the last century, and I think China does understand that the only way that it can maintain internal prosperity and therefore stability, the only way in which it can really fully realise its place in the world and regain the stature that it had in the past, is through cooperative international behaviour. So we are seeing a little bit of chest beating, we are seeing a little bit of muscle flexing, a little bit of resources imperialism, yes, sure, and we all recognize this because we've seen it in the past. But I, my personal view is that there are many forces within China moving in different directions and the overwhelming focus within China is on the need for China to recognize that the world is now an interdependent place. You don't get your way through muscle, you get your way through persuasion and cooperation. So I, I'm optimistic about the long-term future. Well, it's a combination of muscle and well, sure, but I mean, there's always going to be an element of pressure. There's always going to be, from the big guys in the Security Council, a willingness to exercise their veto or withhold their veto as a, as a weapon of, of persuasion, and that's the reality. But um, I think the world has moved on from that reflex resort to violence that we saw right through the 20th century or up to the middle of the 20th century. I think people are just understand that war is not an answer to anyone's problems anywhere, that it just creates catastrophe, human misery, and a loss of opportunity, not a realization of opportunity. So I, th I think we can be reasonably optimistic about the long run. Yeah, look, I think the, the arithmetic of it was not gigantically significant, but what is significant is again the doors of perception that are opening each country realizing more and more about the economic opportunities and the relationship opportunities, the educational opportunities that, that exist between the two countries. I think it's uh, made Australians think much more about Chile, not only itself but as a gateway to the whole of Latin America. It's made Chileans think more about Australia, not only us, but as a gateway into Southeast Asia and that part of the region. We can do a lot for each other and I sense that the momentum is increasing as a result of these trade and other agreements that are being 
Pastor.